This morning is praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Our scripture reading is going to be done today by our sister, Valda Kaikai, Kai, and she'll be calling in from our location, <coughs> location in Canada. Hallelujah. Over to Canada. Good morning, brethren. Um, our scripture reading today is taken from Jeremiah 1, 5 to 10, and 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. Jeremiah 1, 5 to 10. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out 
to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Second Corinthians 10, three to six. For though we in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, a mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is the word of the Lord. Brethren, I just want to exhort you. Uh, the Bible tells us that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, that he will not reject a broken and a contrite heart. He also tells us that when we dwell in the secret place of the Almighty, the Most High, that he will abide with us. You are here because you have come to meet with God, to experience the power of his Holy Spirit, and to stand up under it by the power of the blood of Christ. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Don't allow a heart of doubt to take over. Be expectant. In every instance in the Bible, when people come into the presence of the Lord, they are changed. They are changed because it leaves an indelible mark on them. And your expectation for today, you have come into the house of the Lord, and I want you to be expectant to receive that indelible mark that God is characterized by in every place in the Bible where we read that he meets with his people. The Bible is not a history book. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He says that he will not reject that. So leave your doubts behind. Leave every doubt behind. Shut them out and open your heart to receive. Uh, James, in the book of James, it says that we must ask in faith, not wavering, because the wavering heart cannot expect to receive anything from the Lord. Believe me, God's word is not a history book. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The miracles we read about, the Red Sea, all the miracles we read about in the Bible, the raising of Lazarus, all of those miracles are still available to us today. He, it's not a history book. It is a, a report, a, a, a testimony of the power of our God. And I want you to remember that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So even if you're having doubts, just push them out of your mind and ask the Lord, help my unbelief, oh God. Don't allow the lies of the enemy or any accusations of anything that you have done wrong to take hold right now. Just remember God's truth. Remember his strength is made perfect when we are weak. He's not looking for your perfection. He's looking for you to come to him with a broken and a contrite heart. Just remember that he is here to show us mercy. Mercy is an incredible system that God has created to help us to be able to come to him even in those times when we know that we have disappointed him. Mercy is that system that he has created to veto our weaknesses and replace them with his strength. So just come. He has promised that where two or three are gathered in his name, his presence is there also. And like I said, everywhere where God's presence arrives, there is change, there is power, there is healing, there is, um, there is strength, there is uh, the graceful speed, the graceful improvement, the graceful growth, there is graceful healing. So come expectant and just open your heart to receive from the Lord today. Amen.
Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. That was a wonderful word, and that was read from our location in Canada with our sister's place over there. And that is our sister, Valda Sufiankagbo Mohamed Kaikai. That is a quad, uh, quadruple decker name now. Hallelujah. We're going for the big hall. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody excited? That was a very powerful word, and Thank I'm going to hand over to our pastor, Pastor Martin, so that she can go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh, so we can go ahead and, and commence with the service. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Transformation to Glory, February edition. We're going to be doing this every single month. We're going to be transforming from glory to glory to glory into his marvelous image. Hallelujah. Welcome to Power of Christ International Ministries, where our vision is to teach and to preach the authoritative word. As the <laughs> I'm so excited today after. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Let me do this again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Take two. <laughs> Welcome to Power of Christ International Ministries, where our vision is to teach and to preach the Bible as the authoritative word of God and watch life transform through the anointed power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We bless your name for bringing us together, Lord. You say wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. There is liberty to pray today, and we believe we have answers today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for each and every one that is present right here. We know that we've come expecting to receive, and receive we will in the name of Jesus. No demon, no Satan, nothing would stand in our way today in the name of Jesus. We pray that every household represented here would leave and testify next month's addition to the glory of transformation in the name of Jesus. We cover this meeting with the blood of Jesus and with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We give you praise. We give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I am not going to be leading any prayer points. I just want to prep you. This is like a pre-op before you go into surgery. You go into pre-op, they take your vitals. I just want to get you ready because we have two powerful servants of the living God that are going to be leading the prayer. One of them is somebody I know so well, Apostle Jaya Kai Kai, who is a man of God. He's going to be bringing on the fire. He's going to be praying and he's going to whoo. If you're not transformed today, whoo, you will. Let me don't even go into the negative. Amen. And followed after that is going to be my wife, who we all know need no introduction. She always carries the fire of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I don't want you to be spectators in this meeting today. I want you to participate. I know some of you don't have cameras on, so we can see if you're actually praying. I want you to pray behind the scene like your life depends on it. And you know what? Your life depends on your prayer because prayer is our life support. Prayer is what we live by. The just shall live by faith. And when we are plugged into faith, power transmits in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I am excited already. Let me say something. And I want you to understand what I'm saying and listen before you run and take it out of context. Before we pray, we need to know some of the rules of engagement in prayer. There are plenty of them, but I'm just going to give a couple of them for right now. Since we're going to be doing this every month, every month, or the first Saturday of every month, I expect you to learn these keys about prayer. The first thing I'm going to say is, God does not answer you because you pray. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in for now. God does not 
answer you just because you pray. There are a lot of people who have been praying yet to see the answer or the manifestation of their prayers. But I got good news for you. God will answer those who are in covenant with him, whose covenants are active and in compliance. You get that? Let me say it again. God will always answer those who have a covenant with him, whose covenants are active and they are in compliance. In other words, they are abiding by the covenant of God. God has one answer for everybody. And that is the prayer of repentance. When you are out of your covenant, the only prayer God wants to hear from you is your repentance and your activation of your covenant. From that time on, God would answer every single prayer that you pray. So before we pray, we're going to come back into our covenant, activate our covenant so that we will be in compliance. So from every prayer from now on, we'll be answered by God. Let me share some few scriptures with you. 1 Samuel 28 and 6. This was Saul, 1 Samuel 28 and 6. And the Bible says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. That means God does not answer your prayer just because you pray. Saul prayed and the Bible says, and God answered him not. Why? Because he was in violation of his covenant. He was not abiding and God did not answer. So to justify the statement I made earlier, because you pray does not mean God is going to answer. However, when you come with a prayer of repentance, he invited you to come boldly into his throne room of grace that you may find mercy in time of need so that all your subsequent prayers will be answered. Amen. I'll give you another one. Psalms 22 and 2. This was David. David said, oh my God, I cried by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I was no, there was no rest. Oh my God, I cry by day, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, I am not silent. This was David who was trying to get his prayers answered. But because he was also in violation at that time when he was writing this prayer, God did not answer him. I don't want you to be deceived. I want to call everybody to repentance right now before we proceed to get the good part which is always the answers to our prayer. So let us all bow our heads and pray right now. Father, we come to you as a body. We come to you as a group. We come to you as a unit. We come to you in agreement. Father, we confess all our sins, Lord, so that you can, we can have access into your presence. Father, we thank you because you invited us to come boldly into your throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy in time of need. We need you right now, Lord. We need you every hour, every minute, and every second. Father, we have a long list of prayers we're going to be praying today. Some of us need finance. Some of us need healing. Some of us need peace. Some of us need restoration in our marriages. Some of us, Father, Lord, the list is endless. But we know we cannot present those lists to you if sin is separating us from your face. So therefore, we want access into your presence. So we come boldly, Lord, and we ask for the blood of Jesus to wash us, to cleanse us, to purify us in the name of Jesus. Give us all the power to pray today in the name of Jesus. We need to be transformed from glory to glory to glory into your marvelous image. And therefore we come with a repentance heart, believing we receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to pray. I'm going to hand over the microphone in a minute. 
But I want you to, if you come, if you if you're here to pray, I need for you to pray like your life depends on it. We talked about intensity last week. Intensity would get you there faster. Intensity is the energy, the acceleration you put in your prayer to get you to your destination faster. Now, Florida, let me say Miami, Florida is 640 miles from where I am right now. I googled it and know. I can get there if I choose to walk. But it'll take time for me to get there. I'll get there nonetheless. But if I put some intensity in getting there faster, I can take a bicycle. I can still get there, but the intensity is better than walking. Or I can decide to drive. Who now I've just upped my intensity getting there faster. And then I can choose to fly. The more I increase my intensity, the closer I get to my destination. What am I saying? I need for you to apply some energy in your prayer today. Some intensity in your prayer so that your answer can come faster. The distance from here to Miami remains the same. It does not change. What changes is your intensity and your intensity will draw the distance closer to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And the next point I want to make, my final point, like I said, this is a pre-up, get you ready for the two powerful people of God who are going to be praying. The next point I want to make is when we pray today or these months, I want you to believe your prayer. If you do not believe your prayer, why do you want God to believe in your request? You must believe in what you are praying and believe that God is able to perform that which he has promised. The Bible says, when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. You must first believe so that you can have. If you do not believe, you will not have. Now, when you pray, is always in the present tense. Now, shall have is in the future. Your future is dependent on your now. Your prayer now will bring your future to you. If you don't have a present now, you will not have a future later. So your future is begging you to do something in your present right now. And that is to pray with intensity and to believe. I urge you to pray with the utmost intensity today in the name of Jesus. And I urge you to believe. Hebrews 11, 6 says, He that cometh to God must believe. Believe in your prayers today. And I urge you to testify next week, next week, next month. You will testify of the goodness of God today in Jesus' mighty name. Finally from me, Jesus said, Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you, Jesus said, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see? You know, in the world today, people want to see to believe. But in the kingdom of God, it is not the same. It is the opposite. You must believe to see. Somebody say, I believe to see. I believe to see. Hallelujah. We are going to pray right now. And in Jesus' name, get your expectation up. Believe. And get ready for the power of God to fall down in Jesus' name. Amen. I want an expectation in your heart. Put a demand on the throne. You want to get something out. You got to press in. You got to press in. Hallelujah. Get an expectation up in your heart. In the name of Jesus. As we want to welcome the man of God. Apostle Jaya Kai Kai. I tell you to bring up an expectation in your spirit. As we go into prayer this day. Glory be to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody hallelujah. shout hallelujah. 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 Thank hallelujah. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Knowing you, that your help cometh from the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Lord. We welcome the man of God. Glory be to Jesus. Apostle Jaya Kai Kai. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, God bless you. God bless you. I thank you very much, woman of God. Thank you, man of God, for the invite. And thank you for what you have put in motion. And thank God for what he's going to do with us and through us and for us in the name of Jesus. Beloved, if you are in this conference today, I want you to understand you are not on by accident. You are on because God appointed this day that you are a part of. And before we go any further, I just want to say something quickly as we proceed. You know, 10 years ago, when I came to Atlanta, ministry, I shared a uh, platform with Pastor Paulina, and God used us to pray with a ministry in Atlanta by the name of Seek You First. We are praying for Sierra Leone. We are praying for a nation. A call to prayer 10 years ago. The beginning and the end of a 10 year, to start another 10 year period again. A new decade that we just launched into. I am privileged again share platform again with this great woman of God and the servant of God, the husband, Pastor Mariano, to set another foundation that we're going to build. Upon. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, 10 years ago, the platform that was laid, I thank God for where I am today. And I'm believing God Paris 2030. When I look back at where I am today, looking back in 2030, I want to look back and say that was where I was. Look at where I am now. I should never allow life to be the same again. I should never expect my finances to be the same again. I should never expect my health to be the same again. I should never expect my marriage to be the same again. I should never expect things to remain the same because when you want change, you speak change. And I can tell you, like the man of God said earlier, if you came with the attitude and the inactivity to pray today, you can begin to effect the change you want to see. Nobody going to make it happen for you. Donald Trump didn't make it happen. Biden, they're gonna make, it's not going to make it happen. Obama cannot make it happen. Not in the thing. Even to the point that God has placed it in your hand. What did you just say? Yes. God has placed the mandate and decision in your hand. Before we begin to pray, I just want to say some disclaimer so you don't be disturbing even God. Don't even disturb God because when I read my word, it said he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. He has given. I might have been from Africa. I might not know probably English very well. But a little English I know. Giving is a past tense. It's not a present. It's not a future. I don't come to God today. You say God heal me. Because when God look. He will tell you. I don't have no healing here for you. I've given you everything. Because the glory that we're talking about. That is in you. The glory that is about to come from you. Transform your situation, transform your marriage, transform your health is in the inside of you. But that glory is about to come alive in you. Because Christ in you, the Bible said, is the hope of glory. And every one of you that are children of God, the Bible said, to as many that receive him, 
to them he gave the power to become sons of God. And if you are a child of God, there is a power of the living God in the inside of you. Because the Bible said the same power that raised Christ from the dead abides in you. And if that power is in the inside of you, the Bible says it will catapult your mortal body. And by the grace of God, Christ in you, Christ in me, is the hope of glory. But some of us, the glory is in us. But the glory is not being seen. The glory is not being read. The glory is not trusted. The glory is not being transparent. Because why? There are things, there are people, there are entities that are blocking and stopping the glory from shining. I know that for a fact because guess what? I've been there when I've faced the roadblocks. I've been there when I've seen the hindrances. I've been there when I've seen the obstacles. I've been there when I've seen the reproaches. Like what Joseph went through. Like what Samson went through. Like what Apostle, went, Apostle Paul went through. There were a lot of attacks. There were a lot of things the enemy did to stop, destroy you, to annihilate you, but to stop the glory. But the glory cannot be stopped. And that glory that is in the inside of you, that glory that has been tempted, that glory that has been persecuted, that glory that has been afflicted, that glory that has been chastised, that glory that has been sitting in prison for, for days, for years. Sometimes you have asked God, you say, when shall I? When will I have my own house? When will I have riding my own car? When will my health be perfect? When is my business going to blow some? It felt like God has forgotten you. But I came to announce to you tonight that the glory in these latter days, the Bible said it shall be greater than Thank God for Charlie. Thank God for John Gillick. Thank God for the Oral Roberts. Thank God for the Ronald Bonkins. Thank God for the Idahusa. Thank God of all. But we are in a new season with a new glory. That God is saying that the glory in this house shall be than the glory of the former. As a matter of fact, he said, I will give you the former and the latter reign, which is the glory of God. In the same season, in this season, in this last day that we are in, God is pouring it upon our lives that nothing should stop that way to manifest. Adding to what the man of God said again, it's us coming to the place of understanding, of knowing that we got to be aggressive in the spirit. This is not the time to be lenient. This is not the time. So it's just passing. It's not a time for you to just sit down and you swear, if it be, it be. If it don't be, it don't be. Just live life like that. No. You gotta live life intentional. You gotta be like Elijah. When Elijah said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain, he heard it before he saw it. But what did Elijah do? Elijah began to bring imagination into the place of prayer. The Bible says, pray, it sent the servant to go look, it said, Master, I don't see nothing. He said, No, that's not what was indicated in my spirit. He began to pray again. He continued to pray. He sent the servant to look. He did not stop praying. He continued to pray until several times when the son of when the man returned, the servant returned, the other said, I see in the sky the head of the Son of Man in the cloud. He said, Now it's about to rain. What I heard is about to manifest. So, what am I saying? Give yourself no rest. Until you are made a praise, until you are established, give yourself no rest. In my last scripture before we go to praise Isaiah 9, verse 5. The Bible said that air to of the warrior is with a confused noise and garment rolled in blood, 
but it shall be with burning and pure fire. I repeat, every battle of the warrior is with a confused noise and garment roll in blood. It said, but this shall be with burning and pure fire. So if your prayer cannot move you, your prayer cannot move anything. Remember this. God has entrusted everything in your care. He said, freely you have received, freely give. What did you receive? He gave them power. When he called them to himself, the Bible said he gave them power. He said, heal the sick. Who healed the sick? You. Raise the dead. Who raised the dead? You. Cast out devils. You don't come there and say, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, cast out the devil. No, I command that devil in me, that command that devil in my child, I command that devil in my marriage, I command that devil harassing my business, I command that demon to go, to bow. You take the authority in the name of Jesus. It's done. They'll call you cocky. They'll call you arrogant. They will call you aggressive. Let them call you whatever. But like John says, from the king, from the death of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence shall take it by force, by fire or by force. This one, the Bible says that the battle of the warrior is a confused noise. And garment roll in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And today, fire is going to come out of you. Fire is going to destroy what needs to be destroyed. The woman of God read this, our scripture this morning from Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible makes it very clear in verse 10. It says, Before you build, you got to uproot, you got to destroy. They got to scatter. Because I am not building upon a foundation I'm not sure for. I'm building only one foundation, the foundation of Christ. Some of you, you are born in final. Your life is in continuous battle. Because why? You're born in a demonic, in a satanic background that before you were born, every one of you have been dedicated Every one of you have been linked to a throne, have been linked to an altar. Then you are surprised why you can't give your life to Christ. And you are encountering all kind of warfare. Because long before you were born, your grandfather, your grandmother, they made a covenant to deities. They made a covenant to people. And and, and and every one of you that was going to come, they have already dedicated you all. But I came to announce to you, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. That covenant they made on your behalf, you're going to stand like Gideon stood. After God has finished delivering Gideon, he told Gideon to go to his father's house, and set things in order. There are things that needed to be uprooted. There are things that needed to be destroyed. Because let me tell you something. I don't want you think. I don't want you believe. I don't want you even deceive yourself. To think. They are gone. And they are not still going to try to come back to harass you. To terrorize you. Destroy your life. And destroy your, your family. They will come after you. They will come after your children. But until you stand like we are going to stand today and say, no, this covenant that I have made is supersede whatever covenant my grandfather made. It supersede whatever covenant my grandmother made. And I stand under the authority of the blood of Jesus. I destroy, before you make the covenant, you are making, not only on your behalf, or behalf of your children and your children's children, you got to stand first by the power and the authority of the inside of you. 
begin to take care of what you need to take care of. Don't leave that for your children to fight. Because any battle you don't fight, your children are going to fight it. David said, I am a man of peace. But when I speak, they are for war. That's why David cannot build a temple. Because David's son was full of blood. His son Solomon cannot build a temple. Because why? David fought the fight for Solomon to enjoy the enjoyment. That's why Solomon was busy marrying seven, I mean, 300 wives and having 700 concubines. Because he got no one to fight. The fight I got to fight. And if you and I don't fight and destroy what we need to destroy, superimposing and forcing the victory of Christ. Listen, we're not fighting a battle with the enemy to war with the battle. No. The enemy fought, defeated, and lost. We are fighting from the place of victory. We are unleashing the victory of Christ. We are unleashing the power of the resurrected one. And we are saying, enough is enough. Enough in my health. Enough. Listen, you got to come to the place when you are radical with the enemy. Otherwise, the enemy will never leave you alone. It will not leave your health alone. It will not leave your character alone. It will not leave you in any aspect. But today, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's take this speech. We didn't come to preach. We came to pray. Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 60. My God, my God, Father, thank you tonight. Thank you this morning, Lord. Our lives will never ever be the same again in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 60. Our glory. Thank you, Lord. It says, Arise, shine. Arise, shine. It's not arise and shine now. It's word, word, coming after the next one. Arise, shine. But he said, why am I not arising? Why am I not ascending? What is hindering me that every time I'm approaching promotion, it's like I'm going back down? Why? Everybody's walking around. They are looking good. Their lives are getting better. They are getting parents. Well, it's like everything I know is suffering, 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 suffering. What is my life going to encounter? Well, number one, the law. Light has come. That light is the glory of the Lord upon you. And that glory there, that glory is the abundance. That glory there is the riches. That glory there is the splendor. That glory there is the reputation. That glory is the dignity. So that, that's what you're praying today. Sometimes you see some ugly people. I'm sorry to call somebody ugly because maybe their behavior might be ugly or maybe they act ugly, they act silly. But what makes you think they go to status? They will look at them first and they will not even look at you that come all decked up, all shiny, all in God. Because why? You have a glory. But something is covering you to hinder you so that your glory is not manifested, so that your glory is not transcending. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18, he said, I desire, we desire, and I desire to come to you guys again and again. I desire to come again and again. He said, but Satan hindered me. How many things you have anticipated, you wanted to do, you have tried to do, but it's like nothing is happening. You've put every effort, you took loan, you tried everything. It's like nothing is happening. You say, God, what is it? Because why? You have been hindered. Apostle Paul understood grace. Apostle Paul knew when they were to go to Asia to preach the gospel and the Holy Spirit prevented them said, don't go. He knew when he was called to Macedonia to come there and bring 
the gospel there in the vision saw himself being called he said now we are being released to go but he knew this point he was being obstructed when you study that word hindered the word hindered can be obstructed have you tried to be drinking or you're trying to swallow your air then your airway is being obstructed and you cannot breathe that they have to put a ventilator because why you have obstruction in your airway have you been there when you are trying to go to a place or you are trying to drive through a street and the street was blocked that word hinder is blocked that word hinder is being obstructed joseph understood it but today we're gonna pray we're gonna pray now and say god any personality any word or any spirit even if it's an angel like the prince of Persia that was standing against the city that when daniel began to pray he said daniel from the first day you began to pray to seek the face of god he said your prayer was heard and the answer was released but the prince of Persia which stood me, the blocked me. Well, we got Jesus at the right hand of God, but we are in the earth. We are the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers, rule of darkness, and spiritual host of wickedness. You have that wicked auntie, you have that wicked uncle, you have that wicked sister. Yes, sister, yes, brother. I just said sister, brother. Yes, they do. Like the ones who step into slavery. The ones who try to kill him. Yes, you have them in your family. Yes, they have taken your picture to some Jesus priest. They have taken your name. That they should make you go mad. That they should make you to be frustrated. They should make sure you become a bad word and a reproach. They should make sure you never excel. My prayer is today. Judgment is drawn. I am not praying, oh God bless them, oh God love them. No. May their tongue cleave to their mouth. May their breath begin to cease. If they don't repent, they don't confess, may their breath be stopped and be annihilated in the name of Jesus. But enough is enough. God is not a man that he should lie. God cannot return to him void. It is time for you to go forward. It is time for you to excel. It is time for you to prosper. Whosoever is responsible for things that are happening in your life that does not glorify God, may they go six feet below, but may you go above and never have to excel. I want you, wherever you are, lift up your hands, lift up your voice, clap your hands, clap your feet. But whatever you do, I don't really care. But as long as you pray, but you ask God, every time I lift my hand, let the enemy go down. Every time I extend my hand, let it be a fist against the enemy. Every time I clap my hand, let it be a slap that cheeks in their face. Every time I stand my feet, let them feel it in their belly. Let it be a disease and a sickness that they send upon me returning back to them. In the name of Jesus. I want you, wherever you are, begin to pray, begin to talk, begin to release some weapons of you in the realm of the spirit and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every satanic stronghold. I come against every blockage. I come against everything they have put in action against my life. Let them begin to be destroyed. Let them begin to scatter. Let them begin to break. Let them begin to go down. In the name of lift your voice and begin to pray. Masaka na brandia. Liba ba 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 santa na mandia. In the name of Jesus, O God. Father, we stand under the authority of your son, Jesus Christ. And we speak against every satanic power, every demonic power, every demonic influences through sicknesses of disease. Every pollution they have released against our lives to disgrace us, to annihilate us, to wipe our children down. Father, may everything return today. May it return back to sender in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm not 
another one again. Get ready for this. Apostle Paul came to Timothy. He said, Timothy, I saw the faith that was in your grandmother. That is also in your mother. But that same faith, unfeigned faith, it dwelleth in the inside of you. But was he living to the standard of the faith that was in the mother and the grandmother? No. But Apostle Paul said, I come to find to flame. I've come to bring it alive. Today, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to stand in agreement with you. That glory that God has put over your life to shine. Some of you, you wear the best perfume in the world. But when you walk out there, they don't smell the perfume you wear. They smell a different perfume. You are not seen. You are not recognized. Because why? They have tried to twat. That's how they would have been blocked. To twat. To take away what God has given you. But every hand. Every hand. Every man. Every woman. I don't care who they are. I don't care where they come from. That is represented. For making you. To be like Timothy, who was not living up to his full potential. Wherever you are in your house, wherever you are in that car, wherever you are, you are going. Like I said, I don't care. Like I told myself as I listen, Jesus came that I may have life and have it to the abundance, to the full, till it to my full. I don't care if I had a father or a sister. Who want to go serve the devil? You don't want to serve God? And you want to bring that mess to me and my children? I will send you quick out of the face of this earth. I give you one option. Repent and turn to God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Father of my Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't, goodbye. You got to go. Where are you right now? When Apostle Paul came, Apostle Paul said, he said, Timothy, I find to flame. And today, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the resurrected Christ, by the Spirit of the living God, by Him that dwelt in the burning bush, Him who gave His life on the cross for you and I, the resurrected one, I decree and I declare your life is fine to flame. Your life is out of that predicament. Your life and my life will begin to excel. We begin to mount up with wings as eagles. We begin to rise up like never before. We begin to shine. May our fight overflow. May our backs be full. May our bank account resurrect. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sometimes you take exams. You cannot pass the exams. I know that for sure. I took exams in Georgia. I couldn't pass them. I went four or five times. I was so frustrated. God told me, if I relocate, I relocated. I, 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 I left Georgia. I went to a different state. The same exams, the same questions. I don't care. There were 300 questions from those exams. All 300 of them. I know every single one of them. But I cannot pass it. Because why? A monetary spirit. I didn't realize that. Everything I was trying to do that the Bible said, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. I was telling everybody broadcasting, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. I'm trying to do this. But every time I go there, Boom, I couldn't make it. I said, okay. God gave me strategy. I relocated. I did the same exams over there. But I remember I was going. This time they changed into a bird. They are birds that were following me. 
Birds were in the training. Birds were coming to my hotel room. Birds were coming to my windows. I'm talking about, you don't understand what is birds. We'll save that for another day. But I began to pray. I said, whoever is that man or that woman who has turned into that bird that is following me, I command the death in their camp. And I command spiritual blindness over their lives. May they not even understand my voice anymore. Let my body, I began to call people to pray that were my prayer team. I called them in Georgia, in Virginia. I called them, I said, let us pray. We began to pray. So I went to take my exams. And when I got there, 50 questions, 50 answers, all correct. 25 questions, 20 answers. The last 20, I did 17 out of the 20. The three, I didn't have time to finish. Well, guess what? Passed with distinction. The gentleman looked at me. He said, man, nobody has ever done this that you did. What is happening? He said, congratulations, man. That was powerful. I said, thank you, sir. But I knew something was behind the scene. Do you know how many times I was driving? I was on 25. I was not going to take my life, commit suicide, drive into cars, and just kill myself and everybody because I was tired. I was frustrated. I said, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm tired of what I was dealing with. But when you're tired and sick of being tired, there's something you do. I began to wake up 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I began to stay up from 12 a.m. to 10 a.m. I began to call, you know what? They are called spiritual wickedness in high places. They are called rulers of darkness. So now, when they wake up at night, I wake up at night to attack. When they sleep in the morning, we all sleep in the morning. When they wake up, me too, I wake up. Because why? Enough is enough. And today, I want you to wake up. You see that God? Arise in me, O God. Arise in me, O God. Fight or slam the gift of God in me. Fight or slam the power in me. Let me operate in the power of God. Let me operate in the might of God. Let me operate in the exousia of God. The doxia of God. The splendor. The glory. The weight of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for these issues. You are God that answereth prayer. Unto you shall all men come. We have begun a journey for the transformation to cover and hide these ones from every act of the enemy and continue to raise them from glory to glory and from grace to grace. May their life never ever be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for that which has been done today. And I thank you for that which you are about to do through your other man and woman servants. In the name of Jesus Christ. We know that every battle around our walls, every battle around our gates, they have come to seize. I seal their lives with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Do it again, O Lord. Let their lives be flooded with your grace and your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Come on, shout, shout a big amen and a big hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. God bless you. Amen. And thanks for my time. Hallelujah, 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 a mighty, mighty, amen, hallelujah, glory be to God most high, hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus, raise your voices, oh, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow.
raise your voices again. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Call upon the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Jesus' blood, Jesus' blood shall never lose its power. No, never. No, never. Jesus' blood shall never lose its power. Shall never lose its power. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. There is power, there is power mighty in the blood. Hallelujah! There is power mighty in the blood. Glory! There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power, there is power mighty in the blood. Put your hands together. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power Jesus Christ, there is power mighty in the blood. There's deliverance mighty. There's deliverance mighty in the blood. There's deliverance mighty in the blood. Hands together. There's deliverance mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's deliverance mighty in the blood. There is healing. There is healing mighty in the blood. There is healing mighty in the blood. There is healing mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is healing mighty in the blood hallelujah oh the blood of jesus hey the blood 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 we plead the blood of jesus in the splash today hallelujah glory be to jesus i want to thank apostle jaya kai kai for such a powerful time in the Lord. Glory be to his holy name. Behold, I give unto you power. Hallelujah. It is you that is going in my name to raise the dead. It is you that is going in my name to heal the sick. Hallelujah. Thank you for the powerful word. Apostle Jaya Kai Kai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our brother. We bless you, Lord, for our brother. And it's amazing that our brother did say that it was 10 years ago that we shared a platform together. And that was when Pastor Aligno, Edward Aligno, he's now in Sweden. But Pastor Edward Aligno had invited us to seek you first to pray for Sierra Leone. Hallelujah. Glory be to his holy name. And that was the first day we met and we gelled together. Glory be to his holy name. Hallelujah. I didn't even know it was 10 years, but my God. We bless God for the time. We bless God for the years. And we did have such a wonderful time in prayer. And we continue as we move on. Glory be to Jesus. And to our sister, I just want to declare that she loves the sentence. And I want to say, hell, hell to the Lion of Judah. 
Hey, hallelujah. And that's for our sister, Valda and Sophia and Kagwa Mohammed Kai Kai. Hail, hail, Lord of Judah. Glory be to his holy name. We stand before the King of Kings. We stand before the Lord of Lords. Bear with me. We're going straight into prayer now. Hallelujah. Glory be to his holy name. You've already been exalted. You should be excited by now. You should be ready for delivery. You should have already received when the apostle was praying. You should have already received when Pastor Martin McFoy was already praying. Glory be to Jesus. We just hear to clear out the house, clear out the warehouses in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible has a story. And the story, uh, well, a uh, pastor did say something when, you, when he was exhorting us earlier. He said, God answers the prayers of those who are in covenant with him and who are in compliance with the covenant. The Lord spoke to me this morning about the ten virgins in the scriptures. I'm not going to go through the whole story. Everybody knows that there are five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. If you don't know, go Google it, read up your scriptures, open your Bibles. You should know the story. Five virgins and five foolish virgins. The Bible said that the five wise virgins had oil for their lamp whilst they were waiting for the bridegroom. Hey, glory, hallelujah. It says that the five foolish virgins burned their oil but did not have extra oil. But they were all waiting for the bridegroom to come. I find this situation right now on the planet of the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Where some people know, I mean everybody knows they're waiting on the bridegroom. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Sally, uh, um, Mariama, Bintu, Unta, Shinta, all of them, all over the planet, Sarah, Romeo, Juliet, you name everybody, Cinderella, everybody is waiting on the Messiah to show up. The bridegroom to come, we know. But there are the wise ones and the foolish ones. Just like the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Hallelujah. Glory be to God's holy name. Now, the foolish virgins, I find them when the bridegroom arrives, their oil was spent. They had waited all night. They had fallen asleep. They woke up. Their oil was gone and there was no oil now that the bridegroom has come for the party. They turn to the wise virgins and say, Lendo, give us some oil for our lamps. And they say, no, we're not going to give you some oil because we're not going to have enough for ourselves if we share our oil with you. Which is what I find in the world today. What I want to focus on is those people who say, we're all waiting on God, but we're not going to obey the scriptures. We're just going to do whatever we want to do and be foolish with our lives and be foolish in our waiting. And be careless in our salvation. And those who are wise are watching with fear and trembling, walking out their salvation, watching and praying as the living God says. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to his name. What I want to focus on in the scripture, I have never heard anybody say it, but today the Lord pointed this out to me. It says the attitude of the bridegroom. When the bridegroom entered, the Bible records that they went out with him. Basically, the bridegroom did not stop and say, I'm going to wait for the foolish virgins to go get their act together. You should have got your act together while you were waiting for the bridegroom to come. He was not waiting for them to go get oil. Some people say, well, God will have mercy on me at that time. No, God is not going to be having mercy on you at that time. You should fix it now. Those that have ears to hear, let them hear the voice that is speaking from the prophets unto the people. Glory be to God's holy name. When the bridegroom arrived, the bridegroom went on with the people. So today, as we enter into prayer, as we're going to guard ourselves, as we're going to secure what we need to secure, as we're going to be wise with our lives and with everything, the Bible says that we should occupy till he comes. Glory to, to his holy name. That is the word also that God gave us here at Power of Christ International Ministries this new year for 2021. Our word is to occupy till he comes. Somebody say occupy. occupy. Somebody say occupy. occupy. Occupy till he comes. Say occupy. occupy. 
Hallelujah. We're going to occupy with our mouth. We're going to occupy with our words. We're going to create. We're going to establish. We're going to decree. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to legislate in the mighty name of Jesus. I am here to legislate. And I hope you are here to do the same too. What gives me the power to legislate? Hallelujah. His name shall be wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of His and of His government, there shall be no end. But the government shall be upon His shoulders. Somebody say glory be to Jesus. The government shall be upon His shoulders. And the shoulders is not part of the head. The shoulders is me and you in the body of Christ. The government sits upon me. I govern in the name of Jesus. I legislate in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus. I sign orders in the name of Jesus. In the spirit realm, in the natural realm, and in every realm that God Almighty had created. Somebody say glory be to his holy name. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Amen. Hallelujah. All of you who have your prayer requests, your families, your children, there is nothing impossible today. There is nothing impossible. We have accessed a place where I could tell you that the portals of heaven are open unto this place in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's coming through the airwaves and it's coming through the byways. It's coming into your homes, into your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand before your throne, accessing your throne by and through the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the power mighty in the blood. We thank you for the name of Jesus, the name that is revered in the heavens above and the earth beneath, the name that is above every other name. The name that is revered and feared. The name that terrorizes Satan. The name that has power over all things created. The name that you have exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for the name of Jesus that is interplanetary and intergalactic and all known creation of God. At the name of Jesus, everything, every being, Satan, and all darkness bows in Jesus' mighty name. We access your throne by and through the name, by and through the blood to obtain mercy in time of need. Father, we come to ask for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask mercy for our lives. We ask mercy for our situations. We ask mercy for our circumstances. We ask mercy for our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood that grants us healing. Somebody say healing. If you are believing God for healing right now, I want you to plug in right now. Glory be to Jesus. We thank God for healing, eternal and everlasting Jehovah. I thank you for healing. I thank you for healing of sicknesses and diseases. Every named and diagnosed and undiagnosed sickness and disease. Father Lord, I thank you that we walk in divine health, absolute divine health in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we are healed from cancers. We are healed from heart diseases. We are healed from lung diseases. We are healed from opioid addictions. We are healed from psychological diseases. We are healed from mental problems. We are healed from every gynecological problems in the mighty name of Jesus. We are healed from arthritis, sciatica. We are healed, almighty Father. All hormonal imbalance, we are healed. All dental work, we are healed. Back pain, back work, we are healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every demonic power that is facilitating all sicknesses and diseases to be bound in the name of Jesus. I command you to get out of these bodies right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Everything is possible.
by the blood of Jesus. verse again, last verse, my God is reconciled, hallelujah, my God is reconciled, his pardoning voice I hear. Christ International Ministries, a ministry dedicated to bringing you the undiluted Word of God with power and understanding. Our vision is to teach and preach the Bible as the authoritative Word of God and watch lives transformed through the anointing power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
We hold fast to the scripture in Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Our campaign is to reach our city and surrounding cities with the gospel of Jesus, one house at a time. The gospel shall be preached, lives will be saved and transformed. Hell will be empty, heaven will be full, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The harvest is truly plenty, but the laborers are few. So report for duty every Saturday at 308 Claremont Avenue, Decatur, Georgia, 30030 at 1130 a.m. Together we will build God's kingdom by faith.